Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again. You know what it is. It's time for Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports right here on the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network. I want to thank you guys for being uh, audio tuned in and video tuned in. If you're on, in the chat room, uh, Lenny, great job starting us off today. There were over 20 people in the chat room this morning, so you guys stick around, and if you're watching on Facebook or through StreamYard, look, give me some comments, give me some questions. We're going to talk about some baseball to start with. We're going to talk about those undefeated Oakland, no, Las Vegas, yes, Raiders. How about the Raiders? Did you watch Monday Night Football? And if you did, you watched, if you watched the first quarter, you're, you, you, you were left with the impression, and you turned the TV off and went to bed, you were left with the impression that the Saints were going to run all over the Raiders. No. The Raiders have scored 17 points in every half this year. Two games, 17 in game one in the first half, 17 in game two in the first half, 17 in game one in the game two, 17 in the second half of game two. 68 points together, balanced, they ran the ball, they threw the ball. I don't know if you watched out this kid, Darren Waller, the tight end. I mean, like 18 targets. Derek Carr looked like, well, he looked a lot better than Drew Brees. If you have Drew Brees in your fantasy, he did not look good last night at all. He doesn't throw down the field at all. He throws to his running backs. The Raiders own the game in the second half. And they're 2-0, and and we'll see how it goes. We'll talk about football a little while later, but let's start off talking about baseball. And I want to talk about some sluggers. This is the last week of fantasy baseball. And if you're still in the hunt, you're trying to win a championship, I want to talk about Five sluggers this morning that may very well be available on your waiver wire free agent lines. Okay, first I want to go to the desert and I want to talk about Cole Calhoun and what he's been doing over the last two weeks. And first of all, I, I know that we may not notice West Coast players so much living on the East Coast. But if you're a West Coaster, you're all into it. Well, Cole Calhoun, here you go. He's got a 734 slug in his last 50 plate appearances. He has transformed, in my opinion, from one of the worst regulars to one of the hottest sluggers. Okay, here's what's happening. On September 6th, Calhoun was coming off a six-game hitless streak that dropped his slash line to a 186 batting average, a 321 on base percentage, and a 419 slugging percentage. Since then, he's hitting a, at a 372 average 431 on base and 930 slug. That's right. With seven home runs. Now, this is just since September 6th. Seven home runs, 16 RBIs, 11 runs scored in the last 12 games. He's pulling the ball at a 64% clip and hitting it. His hard hit rate's 59%. So, of course, if you're hitting the ball with that type of hard hit rate, then you're going to be hitting the ball out of the park. Now, I know Calhoun has been prone to massive swings up and down throughout his career. In 2018, if you remember, he started the year hitting 157 with two home runs over a three-month period. That's half the season. And then he clubbed 16 homers in the last three months. So I don't want you to go and drop Mookie Betts for Cole Calhoun. 
I'm just saying since September 6th, you won't find many hitters as hot as he is. Here's another one. Daniel Vogelbach, Milwaukee Brewer. Remember in the offseason, the Blue Jays go out and they sign Justin Smoke. That switch hitting, well, switch striking outing, first baseman DH, well, the smoke monster is gone. And the experiment may be over. Bring on Vogelbach. Daniel Vogelbach is better than he's ever been. Look, over the past two weeks, what's he been doing? He's hitting 417 with three home runs, 10 RBIs in 36 at-bats. King Hap, good morning. Good to see you. Vogelbach was batting 094. That's right, 094 with only two home runs, four RBIs in 53 at-bats before leaving Seattle. So basically he wasn't playing much, and when he was playing, he wasn't doing anything in Seattle. He's streaky. Better or worse, he's streaky. But right now, Vogelbach is as good as Vogelbach can be. Remember, in the last two weeks, a 417 average with three homers and 10 RBIs and only 36 at-bats. Vogelbach... Brewers are going to let him play. So there are more home runs to come. He does have to go up against the likes of Louis Castillo, Sonny Gray, Trevor Bauer. That's not an easy way to go. I'm not all in on Vogelbach. I'm just saying he's been hot of late. Now they wrap up the season with five games against St. Louis. That could make it a great ending to the season. Keep your eye on him. Third slugger, Nate Lowe, Tampa Bay. Now, Lowe has been a triple-A darling. He didn't do much until 9-11. And on 9-11, he smashed a pair of homers in a beatdown at Boston, or at two Boston, and he's only gone yard one time since, but he's reaching base and he's driving in runs. His raw power is graded at 65. Over his 47 at-bats this year, he's slightly above hard hit rate averages. I think he's going to play down the stretch. He's been playing at a home run off DeGrom yesterday. Look at that as a serious pickup. Here you go. Now, this is talking about a guy who you don't have on your radar or didn't. How about Darren Ruff for the San Francisco Giants? How many of you guys own Darren Ruff in fantasy? Well, he's a former Philly first baseman outfielder who hadn't been in the major since 2016. Injuries have paved the way for his return. And since September began, he has four home runs, three doubles, and a 400 average in 30 at-bats. 12 for 30. I know he's 34 years old, but he's in a hot streak. You know how that goes in fantasy. Ride the hot hand. All of the Giants' remaining games are at home. They face the Rockies and the Padres. For some reason, Ruff slugs 474 points higher at Oracle Park at home where he's hit four of his five home runs this year. He's going to play. He's in a hot streak. He's my fourth player to watch whose slugging percentage is on the rise. Here's a fifth one. Fred, good morning. Good to see you online this morning. Thank you again, you guys in the chat room. My final player 
is a player who beginning the season got a lot of uh, hype considering play for the Orioles. And other players surpassed him in discussion during the season, but here I'm bringing back Austin Hayes. He may have the least pure power of any of the five I'm talking about this morning. Remember, Hayes was a top 25 prospect before 2018. He had a promising September last year. He started the season as the regular center fielder this year, had a rib fracture. And over the past week, Austin Hayes is hitting 333 with a solo home run to his credit. Baltimore likely to keep him in the everyday lineup to see how he plays center field heading into 2021. A friendly schedule. They play Boston with its league worst. 5.80 ERA before traveling to hitter-friendly Coors Field 2, Buffalo, to play the Blue Jays, where their home park has the highest home run factor and is the sec well, second home run factor in the majors and highest run factor in the majors. Don't be surprised if Hayes leaves the yard a time or two more. He will play every day. He's got favorable schedule. In fact, I like a lot of Orioles this week. Nothing think I'd say that a month ago. But facing Boston, facing Toronto and Buffalo, it's a great spot to add someone like Austin Hayes. Here you go. So those are five sluggers. Now, Let's take a look at daily fantasy for today in baseball. I'm going to talk about some pitchers first. Framber Valdez for Houston. They're playing at Seattle. He's $9,700. His last outing against the Rangers, really good. 6.1 innings. Allowed one run, struck out 11. Seattle had a hard time hitting Lance McCullers last night. I like to pick on teams that aren't hitting. Valdez has been a major strikeout arm this season, striking out seven or more in all but two outings. He has 20 or more points in seven of his last nine starts. He faces a Mariners team who's been shut down almost all season by left-handed pitching. They strike out 27% of the time versus lefties, they have a 189 below Mendoza line average and a 145 ISO. I'd roll the dice, put Framber in your rotation and on your DFS lineup tonight. Here's another pitcher I really like at a lower price, Brady Singer for Kansas City. He has started out really good this year. No hitter and everything, right? Back-to-back -back games, he's gone at least six innings, allowed zero runs, striking out eight in each start. He faces a Cardinals team. They've struggled offensively overall all season. They're striking out nearly 24% of the time are the Redbirds. And that's versus right-handed pitching. And they have a 235 average against right-handed pitching. I think Singer goes for a third great start. Those are my two pitching ads to DFS today. Framber Valdez for Houston, Brady Singer. Both are under $10,000. Other options. You ready? Drew Smiley. San Francisco, $7,600. And here's a real sleeper, but he's had a really good year. Keegan Atkin for Baltimore at Boston. $6,300. Let's talk about catcher. Let's talk about Sal Perez. Kansas City versus Austin Gumber today. Salvi, since returning from the IL, has been nothing but raking. He's hit safely in all nine games. 474 average. 21.4% barrel rate. 46.4% hard.